Hello everyone. Well, the liberal left Luciferian party has failed in its attempt to take over the United States government with the election of Hillary Clinton. And the Luciferians in this country are pulling out all the stops right now. So it's more important than ever for God's people to fight the evil that is attempting to take over this country right now. We all know who the head is. Johnny Cerucci is joining us today. He's a former Army soldier, a National Guardsman who was deployed to Iraq. And given his experiences, he came away with the desire to write this epic opus of a book called Illuminati Unmasked, which I urge you to read, filled with fascinating details and insights we'll be discussing right now. We've been passionate, patriotic Americans ever since. No one cut anybody a break. We had to earn it uh, with blood, sweat, and tears. And that was the foundation of my going into the military and, and making a, a career of being in the military. And I began to get very frustrated, Sean, with uh, what I saw in both the military chain of command and in American government, the policies that were counterproductive, particularly in my war, war experience, it seemed like we were doing far more harm than we were doing any good. They're bringing back the MRAPs that I wrote in and they're giving up to local law enforcement. And, and local law enforcement, every time there's a, a, a mass shooting or a big terrorist event, uh, get dressed up in olive drab and camouflage and act like they're going to retake Fallujah. The administration of Barack Obama, it seemed like he rolled in. There were no changes from the, uh, the Bush administration. It was really Bush on steroids, Bush part three. Uh, I'm, my, my bias is, is I'm a Christian. And so I got really disgusted with the, the typical venues, the typical... Uh, media outlets that, that I went to to get answers and get information. It just seemed like they really were just carrying the water. The death of Osama bin Laden, I have had inside information that uh, the death of Osama bin Laden did not go the way the media told us. And when the typical conservative outlets continued to carry the water for the administration, I knew something was really wrong. I saw a, a uh, video of former Pakistani Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto talking to Robert Frost and she told him that she knew the guy that killed Bin Laden. That, that's one source, very likely a, a very credible source. She was later murdered herself. Uh, Bin Laden, it's absolutely ridiculous to think that uh, Bin Laden on a kidney dialysis in a cave in Afghanistan could have coordinated 9-11. Uh, I don't know of anybody that, that truly believes that. Probably the same people that believe that, that uh, Lee Harvey Oswald killed JFK. I knew that, that really we were not being told the full truth on that. So, you know, of course it's theater, it's, it's staged events, but you mentioned before about America being an occupied country, and I think that's so important for people to understand that the entire globe is now basically considered the homeland. Uh, sorry, not the homeland. The, the homeland is here, but the entire globe is now considered the empire. And the idea is America basically is now part of its global empire, and that's why the National Guard, like yourself, can be deployed to foreign countries, because even though we're, the National Guard is designed to, to, to protect the nation, uh, the, the notion is, well, there's no nation anymore. There's just this fascist empire, and that's why the fascists are right there in the, in the Congress, right? Whenever whoever's, whoever's addressing the Congress at the front, you'll see the fascists uh, are, are right there next on the broke, uh, on the sides of uh, the Congress congressional stage, I should say. And uh, that's indicating of what you are. It's a, it's a you know, this, this empire, this new Rome, basically. So that cuts us to the old global empire, which is the Catholic empire, right? Which was itself the Roman empire converted, right? Because once the Roman Curia was adopted from the Roman Senate, then it became, they converted the Roman Empire into this, what's now, you know, the Holy Roman Empire or the, or the Catholic Empire, the Catholic Church. Uh, so it never died. And he, would you say that America really has been absorbed by the Catholic Empire through the initiative of the Jesuits? Because that's really what your book, Illuminati Unmasked, is about. It's about the Jesuit influence in this globalized uh, operation, let's say, of controlling and manipulating governments. 
Absolutely, Sean. You're dead on. The, um, the fascists, they're, they're, the two of them, they're fasci. They're in, in Congress. It is a bundle of rods. The ones in Congress are wrapped around a battle axe. Just could be wrapped around any particular weapon, signifying the autocratic or ty tyrannical rule of one. Um, that absolutely, the Roman Empire never died. It simply went dark. It went invisible. And now, you know, there, there's an aspect of Christian es eschatology, Christian prophecy, particularly in the book of Daniel, that talks about uh, the fourth and final beast that is unlike all the previous beasts. And the I'm convinced that the reason why it says that is because that this is Rome. Rome is the fourth and final beast. And rather than the previous empires, um, Persia, Medo Babylon, Greece, the previous Roman Empire, when they wanted to force you to do their will, they'd put a soldier on your street corner and, and, and run you through if you didn't do what you were told. Crucify you or, 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 or take care of you with, with coercive force, direct coercive force. This new empire controls through usurpation. They have co-opted and corrupted all of the major leadership positions. They don't have to necessarily control all 535 members of Congress, but they can control the key positions. And for instance, our, our, our relatively new Jesuit Pope, Jorge Mario Bergoglio, just spoke to a joint session of Congress on September 24th of last year. He is the one that stood between the fasci. He is the one that stood next to the Aquila. If you look at pictures inside, the, um, inside Congress, you'll see not just the fasci, but a Roman Aquila, which is a battle eagle on a staff. And that's planted on a location of military conquest. Um, when he gave that address, Sean, he stood in front of John Boehner, who was a Jesuit educated at uh, Xavier. And he stood in front of the President pro tem of the Senate, Joe Biden, devout Roman Catholic, who was recognized by the Jesuits at Scranton, Pennsylvania. John Boehner took over from Nancy Pelosi. You think two polar opposite people, Democrat, Republican, conservative, liberal. Um, Nancy Pelosi was mentored by a Jesuit by the name of Stephen J. Privet, president of San Francisco University. And she instituted the first uh, uh, Jesuit chaplain uh, as, uh, as house chaplain in the house there. And John Boehner came in and instituted the first Jesuit chaplain. Boehner has now turned the reins over to, sorry, Sean, Paul Ryan. He's turned it over to Paul Ryan. Paul Ryan, good Catholic boy, um, altar boy when he was younger, as a matter of fact. Uh, the number of Jesuit trained Roman Catholics, except for Barack Obama, you know, in, in, in right wing circles, I like to, to say that, hey, Barack Obama has been so bad for the country. He's a secret Muslim. He's a secret communist. Uh, he's neither. He has inst installed so many Jesuit trains, Roman Catholics, you'd think he himself was Catholic. As a matter of fact, I've seen reports of how he carries around uh, a rosary in his pocket, and he's got a picture of the, the Virgin Mary in his wallet. Hmm. Um, he spent five years in Indonesia, and uh, Wayne Madsen says that uh, he and his mom were, were working for the CIA when he was in Indonesia. He spent five years in Indonesia, and everybody knows about the um, uh, one year he spent in Indonesia in a Muslim public school, basically a, a madrasa. Nobody knows about the other four years that he spent at St. Francis of Assisi under strict Catholic tutelage. So uh, then he came back, he went to Chicago, and he learned to be a community organizer in Chicago. You know who taught him in Chicago? The Jesuits did. A, a supposed former Jesuit by the name of Greg Galuzzo, and I don't believe that for a minute, there's no such thing as a former Jesuit, especially these guys that uh, maintain their ordination as, as priests. So, um, oh my goodness, the, the, the list of the number of people that um, Aston Carter, right now, the, the current uh, Secretary of Defense, was educated at St. John's Oxford, the Counter-Reformation College. He took over from Chuck Hagel. Well, Chuck Hagel says he was uh, Episcopalian, but he, apparently he was Catholic enough to teach at Jesuit Georgetown. Georgetown is the epicenter of control for Washington, D.C., for Rome and for the Jesuits. Uh, uh, Chuck Hagel took over from Leon Panetta. Leon Panetta was uh, 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 Bill Clinton's former chief of staff. He was chairman of the Office of Management Budget. He became 
Oh my goodness, the director of the CIA, the Secretary of Defense, Leon Panetta, good Roman Catholic Jesuit trained at Santa Clara. So the, the, the number of, hey, the chairman of Joint Chiefs of Staff, Joseph Dunford, United States Marine Corps. I spent four years in the Marine Corps. Joseph Dunford, Irish Catholic, took over from uh, Martin Dempsey, also Irish Catholic. And Joseph Dunford also spent time at uh, Georgetown. I think he was there at the Georgetown School of Foreign Service. But it's one thing to say, for example, that, okay, well, they're trained by Jesuits, but, you know, people would argue, well, what does that matter? I mean, the Jesuits are supposedly serving the Catholic Church, and, uh, you know, yes, there is this, they're an intelligence branch of the Catholic Church, but what is it that you're that you're getting at when, when you're talking about the, the Jesuit influence Absolutely. over yeah. these people? Great point, Sean. What, what, what I'm saying is, look, just because you're Roman Catholic, just because you're Jesuit educated does not guarantee that you are part of Hydra, part part of this octopus that controls behind the scenes. What that means is, is that you have been screened. And a Jesuit education means the Jesuits have had time to look at you. Do you know that uh, Donald Trump spent two years at Jesuit Fordham? Huh. And that his son, Eric? Eric Trump spent all four years at Georgetown. He's actually on the Georgetown School of Business. Mm -hmm. Eric Trump is. Um, so what that means is that you've had time for the Jesuits to have hands on with you. Bill Clinton was Jesuit trained at Georgetown. Everyone makes a big deal about how he was influenced by Carol Quigley and Carol Quigley's home tragedy and hope that speaks of this illumined elite that controls from behind the scenes controls bankings that makes two parties act like one party carol quigley taught at georgetown that's where their bill clinton was influenced by him jfk was was at georgetown uh bill clinton was trained just like barack obama in community organizing except uh bill clinton was was trained by a different jesuit named richard mcsorley who was also the personal jesuit for the kennedy clan mm -hmm. okay. so being roman catholic and, and being Jesuit educated does not mean you're guaranteed to be a subversive or a traitor. What it means is that you have a predisposition to tr trust, trust the, the Pope, to trust what Jesuits tell you to do, and that you're more likely, God forbid, to betray your allegiance to your country because you feel your soul depends on your allegiance to the Pope, and that's what that means. The WikiLeaks emails, thousands thereof, have made it clearly evident as to exactly what character the Clinton administration is made of. They offer no evidence to counter the thousands and thousands of emails that depict who this criminal is. We'll find out whether or not Donald Trump will hold her feet to the fire and actually drain the swamp as he supposedly says he is going to do. Time will tell. Hannah Michaels has posted another article in regards to the Trump victory. The name of the article is titled Trump Already Facing World War III as the U.S. Economy Nears Collapse. President-elect Donald Trump is being brought up to speed on important domestic and foreign policy issues through daily presidential briefings as part of the standard transitional procedure. 
That process actually began back in August, at the same time the initial FBI investigation into Hillary Clinton's criminal use of a private email server while Secretary of State revealed she was not only untrustworthy with state secrets, but disqualified from holding any U.S. public office, much less the office of President of the United States. Trump received first classified intelligence briefing Wednesday. All links will be provided down below. For anyone who may still consider Hillary Clinton's use of a private email server to conduct classified official state business was overblown or used as political tool to throw the election, please consider the corresponding U.S. legislation below. 18 U.S. Code 2071 Concealment, Removal, or Mutilation Generally Whoever willfully and unlawfully conceals, removes, mutilates, obliterates, or destroys, or attempts to do so, or, with intent to do so, takes and carries away any record, proceeding, map, book, paper, document, or other thing filed or deposited with any clerk or officer of any court of the United States or in any public office or with any judicial or public officer of the United States shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than three years or both. B. Whoever having the custody of any such record, proceeding, map, book, document, paper, or other thing willfully and unlawfully conceals, removes, mutilates, obliterates, falsifies, or destroys the same shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than three years or both, and shall forfeit his office and be disqualified from holding any office under the United States. As used in this subsection, the term office does not include the office held by any person as a retired officer of the armed forces of the United States. Is this part of the reason why Hillary Clinton formally resigned quote unquote as Secretary of State and was the intelligence data suggesting Russia was behind a series of hacks aimed at Democratic Party officials during the United States presidential election simply a diversionary tactic to shift the blame from Hillary Clinton and to try to justify war with Russia? These topics certainly merit further investigation, but as important as these questions are, neither are the primary issue facing President-elect Trump. The economy is. Donald Trump may have the best intentions and truly want to make America great again, but the reality is the malfunctioning corporation known as the United States of America is almost $20 trillion in debt. While that number is staggering and somewhat incomprehensible, what's important to understand is it's well beyond the capacity of the American people to pay off this astronomical debt even with the billionaire real estate tycoon at the helm. It might as well be monopoly money and in fact that's exactly what it is. And the seemingly endless luxury of being able to export the debt both public and private of our American dream all over the world is rapidly coming to an end. So while paid agent provocateur protesters are out leading unwitting Clinton supporters in riots across the nation and Trump fans are basking in the afterglow of the elections, President-elect Donald Trump is being briefed on the real state of the union. We are insolvent, bankrupt, and broke. And if that news isn't bad enough, there are top presidential advisors, cabinet members, transition teams, and political and economic gurus who have been convinced by their money masters and each other that there is only one way out of this mess. Donald Trump is now being surrounded by these people and their warped sense of reality and twisted advice, which is all based on the illusion that this debt-based greed-driven, fake fiat currency financed system is something other than the world's most elaborate Ponzi scheme. All part of the American empire, quote unquote, that our troops are fighting and dying for to make the rich richer and the poor poorer. Mixing the truth that America will never be great again, 
unless we eliminate our debt, with the lie that the only way to accomplish that is by starting war with Russia and China, is a guaranteed recipe for disaster. Throughout human history, people have been wrongly taught to think, quote, desperate times call for desperate measures, when the exact opposite is true. Times such as these call for a thoughtful, level-headed approach based on solid, irrefutable facts, not on corporate fictions, someone else's bottom line, and the delusions of grandeur. The first order of business is solving any issue is to determine what actually caused the problem. If we don't understand why this is happening, then we are powerless to know what needs to be done to actually fix it. And it should be self-evident by now that what we've been doing is not working. We have to think out of the box, which is to say we must realize the solution is not to be found within the current system. Blindly following the leaders of this current system and all of the crazy made-up rules designed to enrich and empower a handful of people at the expense of everyone else is exactly what landed us in this situation where our government is $20 trillion in debt and spending money like there's no tomorrow. There will be no tomorrow unless we change for the better. So for those of you who feel you've done the hard part and pushed a button or pulled a lever to get your anti-establishment candidate elected and now you can sit back and reap the benefits of the wonderful world that Trump will build, wake up. Trump cannot do this alone and even the fact that he's surrounded by people giving him very bad advice. He will need all the support he can get from we, the American people, to do what is right for the common good. Following the status quo is what has impoverished and enslaved America, so it only makes sense that the path to true freedom lies outside the current corrupt and evil beast system. Case in point, this past summer, the British people voted to free themselves from the economically oppressive EU that requires them to forfeit 50 million pounds per day to fund a glass house full of bureaucratic parasites in Brussels. Brexit was considered a big success against all odds and a rigged vote, but within the past few days the UK High Court has ruled that Parliament alone has the power to trigger the Brexit. High Court says Parliament must vote on triggering Article 50 as it happened. The truth about democracy. So judges and politicians have decided they can ignore the people and do whatever they want again. They were able to get away with this because the people thought that their job was over when they cast their vote, only to find out a few months later that the system is and always has been rigged against the common people and the common good. Which brings us back to the question of why is this happening and what we need to do to fix it. How obvious does it need to be that the problem is the box? People struggling to think outside the box because we've spent our entire human existence inside the box and have developed Stockholm Syndrome as a result. There's only one way to get rid of the evil system get rid of the box. The box is made up of unfair rules, so if you want to tear down the box, you have to get rid of the rules that built it. It's really that simple. Without the box rules, the box has no framework, no supporting foundation. Man-made legislation, codes, policies, and procedures, etc., which we have been wrongfully conditioned to believe, are laws and the rules of the box. These rules are not laws, but instead are tools used by the rich and powerful to enclose and enslave us. And sadly, we are helping them build our own prison, tomb really, one evil rule at a time, without taking notice of the walls going up around us. It's time for us to take notice, to start to see the world the way it really is, and do something about it. The very best and only way to effectively dismantle the box is to get rid of all the rules that built it. Fortunately, we have been provided with the perfect means for doing that, 
from outside the box by one who is ready and willing and able to help us if we will only follow the simple easy to follow instructions that have been given specifically for that task. Those simple easy to follow instructions can be found in the first five books of the world's all-time best-selling volume, the Bible. Those five books are Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, and are collectively referring to the Torah, which is Hebrew and means the law, also the new song. The law contains not only the Ten Commandments, which are the basic universal principles of the law, but also the perfect agricultural policy, the perfect economic policy, the perfect system of justice, the perfect healthy diet. It was designed by the only one who exists outside of space and time to protect us from evil and to keep us free. Within the law, mankind has been forbidden from legislating, that is, making up our own rules. Deuteronomy 4.2 Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Upon pain of death, Deuteronomy 17.11-13 according to the sentence of the law which they shall teach thee, and according to the judgment which they shall tell thee, thou shalt do. Thou shalt not decline from the sentence which they shall show thee, to the right hand, nor to the left. And the man that will do presumptuously, and will not hearken unto the priest that standeth to minister there before the Lord thy God, or unto the judge, even that man shall die, and thou shalt put away the evil from Israel and all the people shall hear, and fear, and do no more presumptuously. Within the law, we have been promised all the help we need if, and only if, we follow the instructions to the letter, Deuteronomy 30, 15 to 20. See, I have set before thee this day life and good, and death and evil. In that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. But if thine heart turn away, so that thou wilt not hear, but shall be drawn away, and worship other gods, and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish, and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land, whither thou passest over Jordan to go to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him. For he is thy life and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. And within the law, we have been provided examples of exactly how all of this can and should work, as well as very accurate predictions of what to expect if we choose to do things our own way. So we have the irrefutable facts and rock-solid truth we need to set the world straight. In fact, we've had them all along. This is the information Donald Trump needs to make America great again. And he needs you and everyone you know to send this information to him to make it crystal clear that this is the one chosen and only path to lead this country to true freedom. But more importantly, he needs to see just how wonderful it is to live by the law, which means each and every one of us need to start studying, learning, and keeping and enforcing the law for our own individual and collective benefit. Don't sit back and wait for someone else to do it. If you do, the world will only continue to get worse for all of us. Show everyone how much you care for them by doing what needs to be done 
to set things straight and make this world the heaven on earth it was always meant to be. You will also need to read and study and put into practice the survival plan, the way home or face to fire, the little book of Revelation 10, 7 to 10. Donald Trump has been sent a copy and now waiting for you to do your part to make America the great nation it was always meant to be. Genesis 48, 19 and Deuteronomy 4, 5 to 10. The reality is if people choose not to return to God's law, he is going to allow punishment of all evil people. And that punishment is going to come in the form of global economic collapse and nuclear holocaust. People don't comprehend the concept of mutually assured destruction, but this is the global reset. This is their plan. And if good people don't stand up and fight evil wherever and whenever they can, however they can, then the negative impacts that are shown in the Bible are going to come true. I don't know how to get this point across to people. People are in denial and they think that they can do it themselves through the Constitution and amending the legislation and any other excuse than the reality that God has to be part of the equation. And if people out of pride and arrogance choose to try to do it themselves, they are going to fail. And it's really sad, but my appeal is to humanity. Take your pride, arrogance, and ego and stick it in your back pocket and try to do what God wants.